Well, that's one of the more fascinating things about Elon buying Twitter. Mm -hmm. Because, boy, did that throw a monkey wrench into everything. When you see, like, Biden's tweets get fact-checked, you're like, whoa. Yep. There's a lot of things showing up on Twitter now that were not showing up on Twitter before. Oh, my God. Yeah. So much. Yep. And just nutty shit, too. Yep. I mean, like, some of the wackiest conspiracy theories, Michelle Obama's a man, like, all that kind of stuff, flat earth. But birds. I'd rather my, have that. My, my favorite is the birds, by the way. Yeah, birds aren't birds real. Birds aren't real. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that, one, that one I'm pretty sure of. It just, it doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. That had to be like, a, why can't a we 4chan thing. Like, like, why can't we fly? It's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be a 4chan thing. Yeah. I don't, yeah. You know, sometimes they're, they're onto something. But I like that. Yeah. I like that wacky shit yeah. that's mixed in with things. I mean, it seems insane. And, but that, when I also, when I look at like some of the people that are putting it up there and I look at their profiles and I look at their American flag and their bio and I'm like, are you a real human? Yeah. This is a troll farm in Macedonia. Like what's happening here? Yeah. There's a lot of that. There is. And of course he says he wants to, you know, he's, of course he says he, he plans to, over time, he plans to root all that out. Yeah. Um, he, he wants every, he wants all identity to be validated, uh, verified mm. online. Having said that, <laughs> we fought a war for free speech. We fought the Revolutionary War. Uh, a lot of that was for free expression. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the founding fathers of this country very frequently wrote under pseudonyms. Interesting. Just like Twitter and um, Really? And, and this includes like ben, ben Franklin, when he was a commercial printer, he had like 15 different pseudonyms. Really? He would, he would sell newspapers by having his different pseudonym personalities argue with each other in his own <laughs> newspaper. Right? He, he'd like fight it out. Like he'd have sock puppets. And then, uh, you know, like the Federalist Papers was all written under pseudonyms. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like Madison, all these guys um, wrote under pseudonyms. And so like- Why, why did they do that? Because there was danger. Like mm. there was very real danger associated with being like, you know, are you going to like, what's, you know, what's the king going to think? Right. Right. Like, you know, yeah. Is it, is it like, you know, this is sort of the two lines of argument, which is like, okay, like if somebody is not willing to put their own name behind something, like, should they be allowed to say it? And there's an argument, you know, in that direction, obvious, obvious one. But the other argument is, yeah, sometimes there are things that are too dangerous to say unless you can't put your name behind it. And, yeah, that does make right. sense. So it seems like the pros would outweigh the cons. Well, even just the micro version, which is just like, you know, if you've got something to say that's important, but you don't want to be harassed in your house, you know, you, you, yes. want, you, you want your family to get harassed. Yeah. Right? You want, you know, protests showing up outside your house for something you said. Anonymous whistleblower protection. Whistle, whistleblower protection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is, yes, it whistle, whistle. Was, uh, was it the, um, it, uh, with, uh, one person's uh, uh, a terrorist is another person's freedom fighter. Uh, yeah. One person's whistleblower is another person's troll. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. And the genius of the American system is, yeah, like, say what you want, right? Yeah. Like, let's have it out, right? And so, I, yeah, that's the system I believe in. I believe in that system, too. Um, but I also see Elon's perspective that it would be great if it wasn't littered with propaganda and fake troll accounts that are being used by various you know, unscrupulous states. And in fairness, what Elon says, actually, it's interesting. What Elon says is you will be allowed to have a, an anon or a, what they call sued or anon account under uh, some, your, some other name you make up um, on the service. Um, you'll just have to register that behind the scenes with your real identity. Oh. And, and specifically with like a credit card, right? But then the fear is that someone will be able to get in there. Correct. And, yeah, that's right. Which has happened already. Yeah, that's right. That, and that is a big risk. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, and then you get, you get the other part of this would be like it, Twitter is only one company, right? And so mm -hmm. there are, it's an important one, but it's only one and there, there are others as well. So, um, you know, for, for the full consideration of like quote unquote rights on this topic, you also want to look at what is happening elsewhere, right? Including on all the other services. I'm fascinated by companies like Twitter and YouTube that develop a, at least a semi monopoly yeah. because uh, YouTube is a great example. Like if you want to upload videos, YouTube is the primary marketplace for that. It's mm -hmm. like, Nothing else is even close. Everything else is a distant, distant second. But they've got some pretty strict controls and, and, and pretty serious censorship on YouTube. And it seems to be accelerating, particularly during this uh, presidential election. Now that you're seeing these Robert Kennedy Jr. podcasts get pulled down from a year ago, two years ago, the Jordan Peterson one got pulled down. Theo Vaughn's interview with Robert Kennedy got pulled down. Uh, there's been some others. And uh, Brett Weinstein. No, no, he didn't. His didn't. But it's just these conversations were up for a long time. And it wasn't until Robert Kennedy running for president that they decided, like, these are inconvenient narratives that he's discussing. Right. 
So I don't want to. I, I, I should not weigh in on exactly which companies have whatever level of monopoly they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, having said that, to the extent that companies are found to have monopolies or let's say very, let's say sort of dominant market positions, like that does that should bring an additional level of scrutiny um, yeah. on, on 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 conduct. And then and then there is this other thing I mentioned earlier, but I think is a big deal, which is. If a company is making all these decisions by itself, you can argue that it maybe has the ability to do that. Although, again, maybe it shouldn't pass a certain point in terms of being a monopoly. Um, but the thing that's been happening is it's not just the companies making these decisions by themselves. They've come under intense pressure from the government. Right. And they've come under pretense, intense pressure from the government in public, um, uh, in public th- statements and threats from senior government officials. They have come in private channeled threats. Um, and then and then all of this, the stuff I was talking about earlier, all the channeling of all the money from the government that's gone into these pro-censorship groups, right, that are actively working to try to suppress suppress speech. Um, and when you get into all of that, those are crimes. Yeah. Those are, that's illegal. Like, all, everything I just described, I think, is illegal. And there are specific, like, actual felony, basically, counts in the U.S. Code for, like, those things actually being illegal. Um, there are violations of constitutional rights, and it is a felony to deprive somebody of their constitutional rights. Um, and so I, I, I think in addition to what you said, I think it's also true that there's been a pattern of government involvement here that is, I, I think, certainly illegal. Um, and, you know, put it this way, this administration is not going to look into that. Maybe a future one will. So, do you think it's illegal? It just hasn't been litigated yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I think there's evidence of substantial criminality in the just in the Twitter files mm. that have come out. You just you, you need to have somebody. Prosecutors have to. Yeah. yeah. You need when you want to. You either need class action lawsuits, right? You need to be able to go carve it open with large scale civil 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 suits, um, or you need to you need actual government like criminal investigation. And what has come out of the Twitter files other than independent journalists? Uh, researching it and discussing it and writing articles you don't it's not being covered yeah. with any significance in mainstream news well the mainstream media has been on the side of censorship for the last you know eight years like they've been pounding the table that we need to lock down you know speech right a lot more so that you know they're compromised um and then um you know the other investigation to watch is i think it's the missouri attorney general there's the state level investigation where there's been a bunch of interesting stuff that's come out and the attorneys, the attorneys general have subpoena power, um, so they have subpoenaed a bunch of materials from a bunch of companies. That again, to me, looks like evidence of criminality. Um, but again, you would need you, you need a you need a you need you need prosecutors. You need a political you need the political force of will and desire to investigate, prosecute crimes, and to engage in that battle. Yeah, because it's going to be a battle. Yeah. Yeah, and then if it's private, if, if, if it's private litigation, you need to try to do a big, you know, a big, um, you know, class action suit. You need to, and then you need to be, be prepared to fight it all the way to the Supreme Court. When, and, and there's a lot of money involved in that. 